In our last lesson, we looked at the HR diagram. That's what astronomers use to track the evolution of a star. We're going to use a computer simulation today to see how a star moves from one part of the diagram to another part of the diagram. Make sure you've printed out the lab manual page so you can fill in the data table as we go along. This computer simulation is set up just like the HR diagram. We have on the y-axis luminosity increasing as we go up and on the x-axis we have temperature decreasing as we go to the right. So we have our main sequence stars here in the middle. We have our red giants or blue supergiants in the upper right and our dwarfs down the lower left. Notice luminosity is low and temperature is high for the dwarfs. Luminosity is high and temperature is low for our giants. With this simulation, I can change the mass of a star, and this is in comparison to our sun, so a stellar mass of one would be just like our sun. We can also change the time scale. Let's get started. Okay, this is simulation number one in your handout. So we have a stellar mass of one, and our time scale is 14 billion years. Over in the upper right hand side we see the luminosity is one, one sun, same as our sun, and we have a beginning temperature of 2800 Kelvin. We start here, this little dot is where our star starts in the main sequence. When a star is born we say that it is part of the main sequence. So a star is shining, throwing out energy just like our sun does now. The time scale at the bottom here is in billions of years. So at this point we've gone through 5 billion years, we're at 6 billion years of time. At 8 billion years we're seeing some movement now for our star the same size as our sun. At this point it's moving off the main sequence. It's becoming a giant. It goes into the giant phase for a very short time. See, it's already done. So write yes for giant phase at about 11 billion years, and then yes for a dwarf phase at about 11.3 billion years after it begins. Now we'll look at a star that's 15 times as big as our sun. That's a huge star. With a stellar mass of 15, the time scale now is 30 million years. We have a beginning luminosity of 1,000 suns. It's 1,000 times brighter than our sun. The temperature is 8,200 Kelvin, and we're starting here on the main sequence. Notice the time scale here is in millions of years. So we've just gone through 8 million. We're now at 10 million years after it begins burning on the main sequence. So we see this star becoming a giant 22.1 million years after it begins. And just as quickly it becomes a dwarf. We'll write down yes for white dwarf here 22.3 million years later. Now we have a huge star, 50 times the mass of our sun. Time scale here is 14 million years. We look at a beginning luminosity of 10,000 times the brightness of our sun and a beginning temperature of 13,700 Kelvin. We're way at the top now of our main sequence line. So once again, our time scale is in millions of years, so it goes through its main sequence burning very, very quickly. In fact, at 11.06 million years after it begins, it becomes the giant, a super giant. This doesn't become a dwarf afterwards. Instead, it becomes something we call a neutron star or a black hole. We'll discuss more about this next time we meet.
And once again, it is a giant for a very, very short period of time. It'll become a neutron star or a black hole at 11.12 million years. Now we'll look at a star that's smaller than our sun. This one goes pretty quickly. This never makes it to the main sequence. The beginning luminosity is 10 to the negative 6 luminosity of our sun, and the temperature is 1,662 Kelvin. This never makes it to the main sequence, and instead, at about a billion years after it begins, it's going to turn into a dwarf. This becomes a brown dwarf. That's it for now. When we come back to class next time, we'll discuss all the physics behind these changes that stars undergo as they evolve from beginning to end.